Hello there, Matthew Peterson here, trainer at Pragmatic Works, and welcome to the next episode of our Building Our App and Team series. Uh, if this is your first time in the, the series and you want to build the app from beginning to end, take a look at the description below uh, to get caught up to where we're at, or if you're just here to see how to do searching, filtering, and sorting on galleries, then you just pick up right here and to see what's going on. So in this episode, going to show you how we can take our check-ins that we've been creating, display them, and then allow our users to search, sort, and filter. So without any further further ado, let's see it in action. All right, as we can see, I'm back into my application here. And what I want to do is make a separate screen so we can start to see all the check-ins that we've created. And one really easy way of doing this is I'm going to take our SCR main here and I'm just simply going to duplicate this screen. So it's going to have all of our nice headers and footers that we've already put in. And I'm going to rename this screen instead of SCR main one, I'm going to call this SCR check-ins. And then now that I have that set out, I'm going to zoom out of here and we're just going to remove everything that we don't want to see. So I don't want to see my gallery anymore. I don't want to see this form over here, this button, the save button. And then over here, what we've got, is we have this browse students, we have this uh, input bar here. We don't need to see that input bar. So I'm just going to delete that as well. So the first thing is I wanna put in a gallery with my data, but before I do that, how is my user gonna to get to the screen? So let's head on over here to SCR main, and I'm just gonna put in a real quick button at this point. So we're gonna go with the button. We're not gonna make it look picture perfect. You make it as beautiful as you want. We wanna get straight to it. So I'm gonna say C current location of students. Just like so, I'll make this a little bit bigger. We'll change the color for the next episode. But the main thing is what happens when my user clicks on this button, we want to navigate them all the way over to that other screen. So on the on select button, as we've done in prior videos, we're gonna navigate and we're gonna take them to SCR check-ins. So let's see if this in fact does do its job and it does. All right, so now that we have that done, it's not the prettiest, but you can make it prettier uh, in your off time here. So I'm gonna insert a gallery. Now for this gallery, I want to see all of my student check-ins. So I'm gonna bring in my student check-in and outs data source. I have a lot of check-ins to start with here. Well, the first thing is, let's make this a little bit prettier and easier to read. So I'll make this come over about that much, and I'm just gonna change my background color to a nice white here. Apart from that, I don't have any images for this data, so I'm gonna come over here to the layout, and I'm gonna change mine to title, subtitle, and body. And so what we see at this point, and I'm just gonna zoom in so it's easier to see, is that we have some data bringing back, and I'm just gonna choose what I want to see. So do I really care? So I'm in my template cell. Do I care that I see the check-in identifier? Nope, not really interested in that. So instead, what I wanna see is the names of the students. So I'm gonna point this to our student column, which is a lookup column, which is reason why it's returning a record and not an actual value yet. So because this looks up to our other table, our contacts table, our students table, I'm gonna say, once you find that record, dot, bring back the first name value. And so now we get the first name. Then I'm gonna ampersand to add more, double quote, space, another ampersand, and I'm gonna say this item dot student, which is the lookup column, and then last name. So now we have the first name and we have the last name. My subtitle pointed to exactly what I wanted to, which was the teacher itself. For the body, these were the comments. I just really want to see what room are they located in. So this is another lookup column. I had this set up as our location column, which looks up to our other table. And on that table, I want to point it to the room number. So now we can see where the student is, what uh, teacher uh, created the check-in, and what room they're in. I'm going to add one more piece here just for fun. I want to add in the date of the check-in, and really not for fun. This is going to be really important. So I'm going to head up here to my insert ribbon, and I'm going to take a nice little label, and this I'm just going to drag and drop it, and I want it inside of this template cell. So now I have my next label, and this time I'm going to point it to the actual check-in place. So at this point, I'm gonna say this item dot, and we have a column called the check-in date and time. And as we can see, 
we are now getting the check-in date and time. Beautiful. However, what if we don't like the way that this is formatted? Well, we can write formulas and functions to get this executed, but one of the other things we can do is take advantage of the ideas feature inside of Power Apps. And this feature is going to get better and better over time, especially with the new Copilot features and ChatGPT coming with the Power Platform. So, in order to not have to write the formula to format it the way that I want, I'm going to hit this purple drop down and I'm going to say text formatting. When I choose that, it's going to say, all right, well, here's the current format. How would you like to see this data instead? So instead of three uh, forward slash five, they already give me some pre-selected ones here. And if I don't like those, I can put in what I want here as well. And so maybe I want it to be like MAR for the, the abbreviation, uh, five comma 2023. And then maybe I want the time here as well. So 854 AM. So once I give it the idea of what I want it to do, if I hit the arrow, it's going to give me ideas. And then we test it out. So let's see what this returns. So I'm going to click here and then hit apply and get rid of our little pop up here. And yes, the expression was applied. So it wrote this whole text function to format it the way we wanted, but you didn't have to write it that way. You just gave it the idea of what you wanted it to see and it brought back the format that it needed to do that in. So that is a really cool feature here. Now, if I'm thinking about this application, when my front office goes to take a look at all the check-ins, I want them to be able to see the most recent check-in first. So that way they can quickly find out who was last checked in. We can see it by dates. So let's put a sort on our gallery here. So we got the data the way we want it, but now let's sort this data down. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say, you know what? This looks beautiful, but I really want this to be sorted based on the check-in date. So I'm going to add in the sort function and I want to sort this data source and I'm going to go comma. And what do I want to sort it based off of? The check-in date and time. And then I put in another comma and I choose what sort order. And in my case, I want it to be sorted based on the descending order. And then I'll zoom out of here, close this off. And now when I play my application here, we can see that it's being sorted based on our check-in date. So we're in April and then we come down here to March. So beautiful. The sort is now doing its job. But what if I want my front office staff to be able to search for a specific uh, student here? Because maybe we got 30 students that have been checked in. We want to quickly find that one exact student and not see all of them. Well, in order to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is give myself a little bit of room. Again, don't worry about the design. You make it look pretty and picture perfect on your side. But I'm going to come up here to the insert ribbon and I'm going to put in a text box, which is an input control. And I'll bring this over here, make this a little bit smaller. And by default, this is called text box one. I'm going to give it a better name here. I'm going to call this INP search student. All right. Oh, that name is already being used. Oh, we used it on our earlier one. So let me call this INP search check-in. We'll call it that instead. All right. So there's placeholder. There's no value, but they do have a value here. You want to get rid of that default value because when we set up the search command, it's going to search for a student called text box, which we definitely don't. So for search inputs, you always want to get rid of that default value, but you can put in a placeholder, something like search for student. And once I click away, we now see it says search for student up here. So we've already done a search if you watched earlier video. So let me just review that. So over here on our very first screen of our application, and let me zoom out, I've already added in search capabilities to this gallery where I did a sort and then I did some searching off of that. However, this one's going to be a little bit different. And this is where we have to learn a little bit of extra formula knowledge here. So we started off the same way, right? We're going to say, okay, sort the, sort the records, but I want those sorted records to be searchable. So if I come up to my formula window, so I'm on the gallery, I'm on the items property and in front of sort, I'm going to say, you know what? Let me search these. So I'm going to choose search and it says, all right, tell me the source. Well, the source are the sorted records that we've come up with. So the source is already here. So I'm just going to put in a comma. And then I'm going to just expand my formula window so it's a little bit easier to see. And I'll go down to my next line to start off the next piece. So the next piece says, where is your search text coming from? So I called mine INP search check-in. 
So that is the control, and we can see the green box around that control. What do I want to know about that control? What do I want to return? I want to know what is the value that the user has put inside of that control. Then I go a comma, I say, all right, well, what column do I want to check this over? Well, in our case, it is that student column. So I want to find that student column here. And so I'm going to have to scroll down here in order to get it to my prefixes. I want to search over the student column. And then I'll close that off. Beautiful, right? That's how we did our other searches. However, we have a problem. And the reason we have a problem is that we are trying to search over a column that's not just a free text column. This is a lookup column. So unfortunately, the search command does not work with a lookup column inside of your Canvas apps at the moment of this recording. So we got to figure out a way, how do we get around this issue? How can we still make this gallery searchable even though it doesn't support the lookup column? Well, let's see how that's done. Since we know that the search command is not supported, I'm going to back all of this out and get rid of all the search criteria. So I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to put it right back to the basic sorting order. So search we know is not supported for a lookup column. Well, what we're going to do instead is we're going to put in a filter condition. We're going to say for the records that are returned, we want to sort the records, but we want to filter what records are being returned. So we give it our source just like we did for the search command. Then I'm going to come at the end, put in our comma, and go to the next line of code, which says, give me the logical test of how to do the sort. Well, we're going to use the in function, which is basically going to see if what we put in is, are these characters in the values for the column that we are referencing. And it will only bring back those records that have that value inside of it. So search doesn't work, but filter should, keyword should. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, look at our input box of search check-in dot the value so we still want to use the value and then see if the value we put into this input box is in or is contained inside of our lookup column so we're going to go for our student column here once again so we're going to say in student all right dot so that's a lookup column so i say well what what column that we are looking up to do we want to be checking well i want to check the first name and then i'm going to close this off so that closes out the filter and ooh, looks like we might be in business. All right. So is the value that we put in here, is it located in the first name column? So when I hit play and I'll just put in the letter F to start with, notice we're only getting four Terry returned. If I put in J, I'm only getting Jack. If I put in a, um, an A here, we're going to get Jack as well as Layla because the letter A is in that first name column. So we've gotten around that search capability and it's now working. However, we do have a little bit of an issue that you might have noticed. And for those of you that have experience with Power Apps, you've seen this probably before. But in this formula, we saw this blue underline here. This means there is a delegation problem. And if I hover over it, it's going to say, hey, the highlight part of this formula might not work correctly on large data sets. Well, <laughs> what does that mean? Well, because Dataverse doesn't know how to do this filtering with the end command, Power Apps is going to say, all right, I'll do the work for you. Power Apps doesn't import data. It just talks to the data. But when there's certain formulas, certain statements we send to the data source that it doesn't know what to do, Power Apps says, OK, I'll do the work for you. But there's a limit. And the limit to it is you can only have this go up to 2,000 records. So if I had 2,001 check-ins, when I tried to do this filter command, that 2,000 first person will not show up in the gallery. So that's not a good thing here. So what do we do? Well, we have to find a workaround. So let me show you the workaround that I've got for this scenario. So here's the workaround. We're still going to keep the filter command. We're still going to keep our same exact data source. But instead of using the in command, I'm going to go with the starts with command. So starts with is going to say, I'm going to look for the starting characters of a column value that you want me to reference. So what do I want it to, to look over? In my case, it is the student dot first name column. So that is the text to be checked. Then we put in a comma and we say, where is the starting string that we're using for the checking of the column itself? In my case, it's that INP search check-in dot value. And then I'll close this off. 
Close off the filter. Ooh, good news. I do not see the blue underlines. I do not have a delegation warning here. So if I play my application and I come over and put in the letter F, whoo, only four Terry comes back. Put in the letter J, only Jack. What happens when I put in the letter A? Ooh, not quite as good. So the end command was great because it looked for any occurrence in the text string itself. The starts with though is only going to check the first characters that your users type in. However, this will work on as large of a data set as you have. That in command was only going to work for the first 2000 records. So this was the fix. Unfortunately, we couldn't search on a lookup column. So we went with the filter. Unfortunately, the filter with the end statement gave us delegation. So finally, we got to our third result of how we can use the starts with command where we don't have the delegation warning. But you might be saying, well, Matt, that's great. You're, you're looking over the first name column, but what if they want to search over slash filter based on the last name column? Can we do it over two different columns? Great question. And that's what we're going to showcase here next. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to come back to the formula up here at the top. And at this point, we see that we have the filter based on the sorted records and we're using starts with, and it's only looking over the first name column. Well, if I wanted to also look over the last name column, I can put in a double pipe delimiter here. This really stands for or. So it's going to look for starts with in this column, or it's also going to check another column for us. It's the same formula though. It's going to be another starts with. I give it the column I want to check, which would be my student dot. But this time I also want it to look over the last name column. So I'll choose last name and then comma. INP search check-in dot value. And then I close off. That closes off the starts with here. We see our partner parentheses. Another parentheses to close off the filter command. Now when I hit play and I type in, for example, the letter T, notice now for Terry shows up because his last name starts with a T. So this was just a, a way to get around. First off, knowing a lookup column does not work for searching in your Canvas apps. We went with the filter. It didn't quite work as great because of the delegation warning. Then we moved into the start switch. So hopefully this helps you in your app building experience. If you like the video, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to stay up to date on all of our videos that we post throughout the week. And if there's anything that we can do to help you out with any of your training needs, please do not hesitate to contact us. Hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.